Welcome back to the pool here in Marbella. And it seems quite an appropriate background, really, because continuing the theme of emerging markets, this morning we talked about India. Now we're going to talk about upscaling in Latin America. And we've got a fantastic speaker, Fernando Atunes, who is an international marketing consultant. Fernando, over to you. Thank you very much, Hal. Thank you. Uh, so uh, good afternoon for all. Uh, I would like to welcome, welcome everyone to the keynote and especially to thank uh, the European Summit for the invitation to participate in the TES Affiliate Conference and for open the space to talk about uh, Brazil and Latin America. Uh, I think the timing, the timing is even more pertinent to discuss the importance of emerging economies and to reimagine their places and the opportunities that we raise in a post-COVID world. And, but first, I think it, it's important to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fernando Antunes. I am Brazilian, currently based in Paris, France. And I work as a consultant in the marketing field for technology companies in Europe and Latin America. And my work, uh, in addition to the development assistance and support in the marketing strategy for startups and SMBs, I also coordinate the implementation of outsourced marketing models, uh, which was also the focus of my research published by the Academic Journal of Marketing Communications in the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, in this lecture, I will present some data and information related to macro market and digital business scenario in Latin America, including the impact of the pandemic, as well as some current opportunities and trends. And first of all, uh, Latin America is a large market with high growth potential that is increasingly important to the world economy. In 2019, uh, the total population of Latin American and Caribbean was over 640 million inhabitants. Uh, the region accounts for 8% of the world population. Brazil, for example, uh, the Latin America's first and biggest economy, uh, has 58 of total e-commerce spend. And compared to the rest of the world, Brazil was the fourth largest economy by numbers, number of internet users. In Brazil, uh, middle-class consumers have become aware that prices for consumer goods and customer services policies can be better online. And thus, uh, uh, they, they, they tend to shop more online while taking advantage of online discount websites and coupons. And uh, Brazilians tend to be uh, first movers, fast technology adopters. Uh, the country is already a very vibrant ecosystem for digital goods and services, and it's a very fertile ground for digital goods. It's really an open arms market for several opportunities in the digital world. But it's not just Brazil. Mexico, for example, is the ninth biggest market of the world in internet users. In Argentina, for example, almost 40% of the population shopped on online in 2018, the, the highest number in the region. In Chile, uh, which has the, one of the best tech infrastructure of the region, uh, e-commerce uh, numbers are more than double in the last uh, five years. And the increase in the number of uh, online shoppers in all the region can be attributed to declining smartphone prices increasing availability of subsidies, uh, subsidies and finance by mobile operators and the spread of 4G and 5G networks across the region. About mobile market, for example, uh, Latin America has uh, had close to 420 million mobile internet subscribers and an expectation of uh, 62 million 5G connections until 2000, uh, and 2025. The market size is currently larger than the United States and set to rival the European Union. The, 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 this one of the numbers that represents a large opportunity to gain scale in the, in, in the region, even in higher value products and services. Uh, this, at, this asset, for example, allows uh, software as a service startups to grow exponentially. Uh, startups have begun to enter the region rapidly growing disruptive technology spaces, such as augmented and virtual reality, artificial intelligence, robotics, and Internet of Things. E-commerce in Latin America went from virtually nothing from, from the beginning of the century to over 70 billion in 2015, 
with many unicorns such as Mercado Libre, Despegar, B2W, and OLX. And uh, another aspect that is important to take into account is the e-commerce volume. As you can see in this graph, uh, Brazil and Mexico are the largest markets in Latin America, but uh, Colombia and Chile are growing at a faster pace. In this sense, investments in digital advertising are also increasing and consistent. Uh, just in South America, for example, uh, uh, the ad expanding in, in is projected to reach around $10 billion in 2021. The market's largest segment is search advertising with a market volume of $4.2 billion. Uh, in global comparison, uh, the, the ad expand in the United States around $180 billion. So in, in a bigger market of internet users as Latin America, we can possibly say there's a lower competition to achieve your goals in Latin America. The average ad expanding per user in search advertising segment is projected to amount under $15, and 70% of total ad expanding will be generating through mobile until 2025. So the, the, the Brazilian marketing, for example, represents more than 60% of ad expanding in Latin America in search advertising, is also uh, the largest segment. And all these numbers that I mentioned so far are quite interesting and maybe you are almost <laughs> convincing to start your business in Latin America. However, uh, we all know the COVID-19 pandemic hit harder emerging markets and we cannot ignore these challenging situations, but we, uh, we also need to consider the opportunities that the emerging economies will offer in a post-COVID world. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic has accelerated the digital revolution, not all over the world and in Latin America, of course. Uh, for example, the region entered in the uh, COVID crisis with low levels of companies using digitalization in their everyday operations, especially in SMBs. And uh, they are investing in new digital economy, new digital technologies nowadays. I, I think uh, it will be key to new operation models. Companies will have to adopt technologies, to process large amounts of information to improve uh, decision processes, uh, which may redefine business models. The industry should incorporate great uses of robotics to increase efficiency. Digital transformation may also affect business model operations through changes in marketing and sales. And these are all good opportunities for those working with digital solutions. Of course, we are in challenging times, as I said, and all over the world, but uh, there's always uh, bright spots. According to World Bank, Latin Americans' hospitality and personal services may suffer long-term damage, but information technology, finance, and logistics will expand. In the medium term, the gains could be larger than the losses. The COVID-19 pandemic has a cast of, uh, a, a, a spotlight on the importance of digital technologies and connectivity and served as a catalyst for innovation and new ways to deliver essential services remotely, including education and healthcare. Uh, and healthcare. The, uh, the telecom operators reported a 25% increase in mobile data, da data traffic during lockdown. And although with nearly three, uh, yeah, 300 million people in the region still unable to connect the mobile internet, uh, the pandemic serves as a reminder of the need to accelerate efforts to close the digital divide and ensure no one is left behind. For example, 26% in, in, in the share that the digital goods segment had of the total e-commerce market market in Chile by the end of uh, 2020, and these represent more than 50% growth over the previous year. The e-commerce uh, consumers' projections are encouraging. The pandemic more than doubled the estimates about new online consumers in Latin America, and the forecast of e-commerce penetration for this year increased around 15% of the last forecast before COVID. This is quite related to the growth of delivery apps in the region. Delivery apps uh, uh, have gotten uh, Latin America consumers used to a greater array of, uh, array of things online, becoming 
more comfortable with the online channel in general. Uh, this has lifted digital goods overall. And about trends and opportunities, according to WeBanks, I don't know if, uh, if everybody knows, it's a platform which solves business challenges and payments in Latin America. The interesting fact is that uh, if we compare Latin America market, Latin American market with other markets, such as US market or European market, we will see that uh, Latin America is growing faster than the other regions. Just for instance, just for instance, uh, retail online marketing in Latin America made growth 21% in 2020, while in the other regions, such as the European market, this rate will occur uh, just in three years. Another fact that makes the, makes the Latin American attractive market is the constant growth of internet penetration. Especially now uh, with the COVID-19, people are buying online more than ever, all over the world, of course. But uh, therefore, you can have a, a broadest reach and increase your sales in the region. It may sound uh, cliche, but uh, you need to explore the possibilities and be creative when doing business in Latin America. Look at the markets outside of uh, maybe the top one or two that you are really most familiar with. Look for opportunities beyond that borders and know that there are many ways to develop business in Latin America. I could share with you some examples of Latin America, of course. I, 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 we know that is a, a region with high and increasing growth, as I said, mostly on marketing and technology fields. And I think there are uh, great examples about it. The first one is tech startups. The tech startups ecosystem in regional hubs like uh, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, Mexico City uh, has valued around $40 billion. There are 123 Tecno Latinas they are valued over $25 million, including nine unicorns. And uh, an important trend uh, among uh, fintech startups in Latin America is access to finance for clients who would otherwise be excluded or underserved by the traditional financial service sector, whether they are individuals or small and medium-sized uh, enterprise. It's an open space uh, for tech startup, of course, but especially for blockchain and crypto business. The other is uh, companies are increasingly, increasingly tapping into the rising demand for e-commerce. In the last three years, the number of mobile internet subscribers in Latin America, uh, as I said, increased from 350 to 420 million uh, users just in the last three years. In a market size, in a market, sorry, in a market with this size, it's a great opportunity to upscale for any kind of business of the digital economy. Brazil, for example, uh, represents massive opportunities in volume, in growth, and new users coming into the online industry for the first time. The country is the favorite option of most international merchants coming to Latin America, mainly because of its size. Uh, and, and, even, uh, and even though Brazil is the largest market in Latin America, there is still a part of the population who have not yet migrated to e-commerce. The good news is that the online market, market is growing day by day. E-commerce users grew by 25% in 2020 to reach an estimated total penetration of 61% by the end of the 2021. And the third and last point is, uh, companies are using technology to adapt the consumer's needs and personalize experiences. And it opens opportunities for technologies that integrate online and offline process of any kind. Uber, for example, the multinational transportation company, uh, launched Uber Lite in Latin America, a version of the app geared towards users in less uh, develop, uh, developed areas. Uh, the, the app can be downloaded uh, can be downloaded uses less than uh, five megabytes memory and operates using less than 20 megabytes of data data in Mexico uh, for example customers without a smartphone uh, uber installed physical totems in malls and stadiums at which customers can request a ride uh, following the implementation of his policy, uh, Uber, uh, Uber states that more than 50% of its trips uh, are paid in cash in the region. 
reaching more than two thirds in, in other countries of the region. And uh, th this just reinforced the, the, the opportunities that fintechs and crypto business uh, can have in the region. And so, as, uh, as we saw, it's really uh, uh, an open arms market for several opportunities in the digital world. Although uh, a large part of its population, uh, I, I estimate around uh, 204 million people, still are not online. But for me, it's an example of opportunity. Even considering everything that could be improved, that could be improved, uh, the current market uh, numbers clearly demonstrate that is uh, already a good opportunity to upscale in the region. Much more is, is still to come. And the question is, if you are going to be there when it arrives. Who arrives first takes the best seats. So thank you very much for your audience. I'm happy to answer any questions now or later. Let's continue the discussion. Fernando, thank you so much. I, I, there were so many fascinating things to unpack there. Uh, I'm gonna come back to mobile in a minute because that's a bit different to established English speaking markets where desktop uh, is the primary starting point. But let me start by my question that I ask, I've asked a lot of speakers. If I'm a beginner, I'm coming to the region and I want to start an affiliate program in Latin America, what kind of things should I take into account? What what tips have you got for me? Okay, so the f thanks, Half. Uh, there are several steps to, to develop an affiliate program. I think one tip for, for you should be uh, on how to engage with your affiliates. Of course, that uh, to launch an affiliate program, you, you will need to find affiliates in the region uh, who want to promote your brand. This is uh, clear and happens everywhere. But you, you need to keep in mind that recruiting affiliates to join your program in Latin America is one thing. However, to keep them really engaged is another. Uh, if I had to, to, to give you one tip uh, here is really to work to build a relationship with them and communicate uh, very often in Portuguese or Spanish uh, uh, and be close to them on a regular basis. I create opportunities for them to earn extra revenue and always, always communicate with them, even on a small adjustment that you may need to do in your program. It's, a, it's, a, it's an education process. Uh, and of course, uh, there are other insights that I'm happy to continue to discuss with you, uh, with you later, if you want, with your, all, all audience here. And so uh, I have my contacts here. Uh, so uh, if anybody just to know some more details about it, just contact me uh, uh, and and to to start a, a new affiliate program in Latin America and on other tips. I'm 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 here to 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 continue the discussion. I think people might take you up on that. Um, I've got a, right. a, a question about regulation. So just tell me about some of the regulatory issues that there are in Latin America. And do you see changes in the business environment, especially relating to gaming, for example? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there are definitely, uh, uh, there are some regulatory improvements in some countries, but uh, there is a lot uh, to be done yet. Brazil, for example, uh, it's improving its law over the years to open its markets, to open its market. Uh, the Brazilian Congress is now, uh, at the moment, is now analyzing a new law uh, project to upgrade the current uh, law regulation about sports betting and improve uh, sports legislation in the country with uh, changing the tax base. And uh, let me say here that the current law is also recent and it's in place since uh, December uh, 18th. Uh, yeah, 2018. Yeah, 20, 2018. And this also demonstrates how fast countries are willing to adapt their regulatory systems. As, as the, environment, uh, the environment changes, uh, this will for sure attract newcomers to expand the market and opportunities. There is just one point that I want to, to, to highlight again. It's important to, to take into account new payment solutions. Cash is still important in the region, for example, as I said in, in the example of Uber that I did. But uh, I, I read an, an article recently that stressed that almost 50% of the population in the region are still unbanked or underbanked. Uh, E-banks that I mentioned before, 
for instance, uh, it's a good example on how to transform a challenge into an opportunity. The company is modernizing cash and local payments are consistent in nine countries in Latin America. And there are, of course, other examples that I would, would be happy to discuss further if, uh, with you. So please uh, don't hesitate to, to reach me later. Um, I've got another question for you here. Uh, how do you, so this is a question about your company, how do you usually help businesses with their marketing strategies to upscale in the region? And could you give me an example? I think also to add to that, where should we start? Because you mentioned Spanish and Portuguese. Um, so Portuguese, Brazil, huge market. Yeah. Spanish, Spanish, kind of the rest of Latin America. So if I was going to pick one, where should I go and why? Yeah, <laughs> it's a difficult question. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a really good question and a really big, big question to 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 respond in a few minutes. But I, uh, I think you can you can get both. <laughs> it's not a problem. Uh, Brazil, if you if you reach Brazil, Brazil inside Brazil, of course, there are so many regions with different cultures. Uh, as well as uh, in other countries of Latin America, and Spanish is not so so hard, difficult, and different than Portuguese. So I think uh, when you start some kind of business, uh, uh, you can uh, reach both. Uh, you can put in line first of all Portuguese, and after Spanish. Uh, depends on on. on of your product, depends on what you are going to, to sell, depends on what you are going to promote. So in some cases, we can uh, we can reach first Brazil. In some cases, we can reach first uh, the other countries. It depends. But uh, but in my in, in my case, uh, um, um, over the years, I have been working with several companies. Uh, and I, I think the common mistake that the, most of them, and uh, this is not related only to Latin America, is not to plan in advance. Uh, I, I think having a marketing plan and a budget assigned to, to it, it, it's key to success. Uh, I always work in a strategic marketing plan to give a clear roadmap to implement the actions planned. And to do that, I always consider the market and competition competitor research to determine the, the, the best strategies to, to the company should take into action. And I also work closely with companies so they, they can monitor the results and refine the approach and strategies that I design. I think uh, these two examples were on planning, but uh, 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 I think the people can, 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 can feel free to reach me later to, to continue the conversation. Uh, through through the telegram that's in, on the screen or or, or on social media I would be happy I would be happy also to discuss some ideas on implementation practice and additional insights uh, even in Brazil or in, in in other countries of Latin America. I've got one final question for you if you'll indulge me. So you talked about seventy percent. In fact, I wrote this down. So you were saying the digital market digital marketing. Um, market for the one of a better word in latin america is about 10 billion dollars a year and in america it's 186 so 18 19 times the whole of latin america but what was interesting was you said 70 percent of that is mobile so mobile is the key at the moment to reaching people all through today, when we've been talking about the US and Europe, it's always desktop first. That's been kind of a lot of the messages when people are talking about testing new ideas or, or working with a new client. So mobile first, are you, are you seeing some really interesting things develop there that perhaps aren't happening somewhere else? Because you just talked about mobile money, which of course started actually in Africa, in places like Kenya, and has come to Latin America. So the, 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 these uh, tens of millions of people who don't even have a bank account. What, uh, actually you also talked about, sorry, if, you, if sorry to keep talking, yeah. <laughs> but you also no, talked no, no. about the, U the Uber app being quite small in file size and you know easy to download because data is expensive something that here in spain i mean i'm i'm literally connected to a 4g hotspot right now talking to you from the pool side i just take it for granted i live in the uk it comes with my package and it doesn't cost me very much but there must be some kind of usability things some new things that you're seeing 
in Latin America that are quite unique. Can you just talk a little bit uh, about that? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think, uh, uh, the f first of all, uh, the, the mobile first happens because uh, it's cheaper nowadays to, to buy a telephone, uh, a cell phone, than to buy a computer or any other things. And it's easier to operate it. And so uh, when you talk about a, 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 a huge market and when it's cheaper to use a, a, a mobile device, uh, most of them, you use them, uh, most of the desktop and, and, and other kind of devices. And I think uh, and it's important because the engagement uh, uh, in the using uh, in the use of the, the, the mobile devices are, uh, are also have, a, 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 how can I explain it, has higher penetration with the population with the other kind of connections in any other kind of connections. And many of uh, fintechs and, uh, and apps are, are, are doing some kind of um, some kind of projects to to reach people who was uh, unbanked to to enter inside this this app to 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 use them for payment issues to use them for transfer money and many other things. And there's several several examples of, of, of it in uh, with crypto, with blockchain, and uh, and with traditional banking. Also, the traditional banks are in Brazil are, are so um, they're not so they don't move so quick that uh, that the market has, is moving. So it opens opportunities for for other companies to to go there. And as I said, uh, the, the numbers as I said, it's about uh, 10 billion people in ad expand. And it's uh, it's uh, uh, comparing to the U.S., it's around uh, 18 uh, billion. Eight, no, so, sorry, uh, 180 uh, billion dollars. Um, it's I think it's a huge opportunity because uh, even if more people connected and not so much ad expand, it uh, it can represent for us that the competition. Uh, of uh, of your message on the internet, it can be cheaper. So possibly uh, in some markets, we will pay cheaper for a keyword, we will pay cheaper for a, a, an advertising or something. There's there's uh, uh, especially especially nowadays because the exchange money changed a lot in so many countries uh, in Latin America, in, in Brazil, in Peru, and many other countries. Uh, it's uh, it's even cheaper than before. So I, I think the, 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 the acquisition costs can be, um, can be cheaper than, uh, than in the, to achieve the same client in the other markets, especially if you use, uh, if your product is it's a, a digital product that you not need to, to logistics and many other things to bring a product, to go to, to the region. It's it's even better. It's even better to work there. Yeah, it's a really interesting area. I mean, I think you could be a test case or or an, a region to watch on that front. Well, that's all we've got time for, Fernando. Um, I know that people will want to connect with you on the platform, so please do that through Brella or the Telegram channel that Fernando mentioned. This session is also available on Facebook and YouTube, so you can find it there uh, if you want to watch it back. Uh, but Fernando, thank you. That's all we've got time for on Stream 1. We'll be back soon, probably at the top of the hour, so about 30 30 minutes time but for now we'll see you soon okay thank you thank you Hal. thank you very much
From day one, Crack Revenue's tagline has been, follow the whale. Ten years later, it's truer than ever. Unlike most CPA networks, we test all of our top offers using our designers, media buyers, and analysts to make sure the funnel is working and that the offer is more than profitable. Then we share the recipe with our affiliates. Simply put, Crack Revenue is made for affiliates by affiliates. It's the whole idea behind Follow the Whale. That way, everybody wins. over $100 million a year. We took Transparent Labs from two to 24 million. We took Slingshot from seven to $12 million. We took Pull Fence DIY from one to five million. We doubled ClickFunnels return on ad spend in two months. And we drove $12 million for creditrepair.com. So click that link and schedule a call. How do we do it at Chamber Media? Well, we took 20 world-class ad buyers and 14 production teams and put them under one roof. Like the Brady Bunch, but bigger and less incestuous. Speak for yourself, I'm married to HR. Ooh. The safest place to gather all your clients. Open a segregated account with Connect Pay to keep yours and customers' money separately. on the internet worldwide who generate trillions of US dollars every year. There are several ways to attract part of this huge traffic to your website. Search engines, organic and paid traffic, push notifications, social media traffic, Foreshop net index, and much more. When users enter the website, they are monetized in several ways. Ads, CPC, CPM, e-commerce, dropshipping and affiliate marketing, mailing list marketing, and much more. So what do you get? You are the owner of the website with no headaches. Foreshop manages everything for you. You get paid passively. So what do we get? We are managing thousands of niche websites. We get paid for selling traffic and ads to businesses. And while doing so, become one of the top 10 largest online ads companies in the world. Join us today. 
Scaling an agency can be so difficult, right? It can be so stressful. You're hiring people, and you're firing people, you're setting KPIs, you're trying to figure out the tech and the systems and process and operations. You're trying to figure out how do I serve 50 clients and then 100 and then, man, it looks completely different when you serve 500 clients. How do you grow from being a really small team to hundreds and hundreds of people working with you? At height, we're reestablishing the way we do this. We're completely disrupting the model on how agencies can scale. How can we, how can we come together under one technology, under one set of systems, under amazing product fulfillment to create a system that's not only where we can scale faster, but we can scale with more stability. Ultimately, guys, if you want to come together, if you want to create something absolutely incredible, join us today as we scale across the world. Hello and welcome to the European Summit. My name is Ralph Cochran and I'm here to show you how to get the most out of this hybrid event platform. Now, I've promised the team that I won't talk too much about the glorious surroundings here in Marbella, the deep blue sea and the fantastic beaches. But if you weren't able to join us here in Spain, don't worry, there are going to be some more TESS affiliate conferences, starting with Prague in September. And you can find out all the information you need on the tessaffiliateconferences.com website. So let's head over to Brella. This is my homepage. Yours will look something a bit like this. And on the top right hand side, there are a list of tasks that Brella wants you to complete. And the reason for that is Brella has a really clever artificial intelligence based matchmaking algorithm. So basically, it can show you the people at the event that you should meet based on your profile. Now, the first thing you need to make sure of is that you've opted in for matchmaking, and you do that by editing your profile if you haven't already. So here you can see on mine various things that I'm interested in. I really like travel by the looks of it, uh, but I also like virtual reality, crypto, blockchain, and a few other things as well. And I've been able to put my LinkedIn profile in there, my email and website for my company. So helping to generate some leads. Uh, underneath the live stream, and it will be live by the time you're watching this, uh, you'll also find upcoming sessions that Brella is going to recommend to you and sponsors that it thinks based on your profile you will be interested in. But the main reason that Brella is so cool is its matchmaking algorithm that matches you with people that you might be able to do business with. So let's take a look at Nick Callisto, and I promise I don't know Nick, um, but it would appear that we share a few things in common, particularly crypto, blockchain, forex, uh, fashion to a certain extent, and CDNs, content delivery networks. So I can suggest a meeting with Nick, and I can type him a quick message here. And if I send that meeting request, he will receive it via this little chat icon top right. So the two speech bubbles is what you're looking for. And here you'll see some chats that I've had earlier. So that's where requests for meetings are going to come in, and that's where your requests will be as well. Now, if Nick accepts my request, then I'll be able to chat to him. And then at the appointed time, which was 10 a.m., we'll be able to have a video call. One of the tips that I'll give you is two minutes before your video call, just send a little chat message saying, looking forward to meeting you in two minutes, or are you ready? Just helps to convert more of those chat messages to actual calls. Now, on the Brella user interface, everything that you need is on the left-hand side. Probably the main tab that you'll be in is the Stream tab. We have three stages at this show, so a lot of content. And if you're interested in having a look at what's going on on the other channels, you'll find the, all three of them from this drop-down box on the Stream tab. It's also on the Home tab as well, a uh, little smaller box there, but you see Stage 1, two, three. So if you want to find stage two, that's how you do it. And then as you move around the platform, the live stream follows you. So you can carry on listening to the content and the discussion whilst you're having a look at the sponsors or in this case, the schedule. On the right hand side of the schedule, you'll find lots of categories uh, that the organizers have helpfully set up 
to help you find the content you want. So if you're only interested in YouTube, you can tick that box and find the session with Sebastian about YouTube. Likewise, advertising, e-commerce, affiliate networks, banking, artificial intelligence, the list goes on. There's something for everybody. So rather than looking at this quite complicated, very detailed and fantastic schedule, you can start to filter it to the areas that you're interested in. Now, tip number two, on the top right, it's always a good idea to tick past content once we start the conference. So if you want to go back and look at the earlier sessions that you missed, that's how you find them because Brella will show you the sessions that are coming up from the time right now. So if you're thinking, where is the 10 a.m. session from this morning? That's how you find it. You click on past content. So over on the left-hand side, there's another really important part as well, which are the breakout rooms. This is your opportunity to interact with other delegates and talk face-to-face, -face, so much like a Zoom call. Um, you will only be able to get into these breakout rooms when the time comes. So five o'clock here on the second, I'll be able to go into this room. And there's a limit of 50 people. So if you are desperate to get into one of these breakout rooms, make sure that you're there early. If you want to connect with or find out more information about the speakers, you do that on the speakers tab. So their bios, their connection details, things like LinkedIn will all be on there. And none of this would be possible without our sponsors. So if you want to find out more information about some of our sponsors, you'll find them here. Uh, for example, if I go into Secure and Pay, I can find out information about them, watch their product video. I can also chat with them and I can arrange a meeting. And you'll see that there are lots of sponsors who've helped to support this event. So please do have a good look through and see if there's anything that's of interest. So that's it for a quick tour of the Brella platform. If you have any questions, the team will be on hand to help you. There are also three hosts for this event. I'm one of them, so you'll see me on some of the live stream sessions along with Romana and Sam as well. And finally, if you want to share the content, maybe you're speaking and you want to show your mum, you can because we're going to be streaming to Facebook and also YouTube. So make sure you look for the Euro Summit on Facebook. That's the Euro Summit. Uh, and make sure you like and follow. Uh, and you'll see some of the sessions there. And on YouTube, if you search for Walter Tess, Walter's one of the organizers, you'll find the YouTube channel as well. And again, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell on YouTube. It all helps help the community to grow. So that's it for this quick tour around this hybrid event platform. We hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you soon. Three, two, one.
house is getting cold Night after night It's just gotta be tonight And I know that Your touch is made of gold Going through the shop There are things that never stop And my heart's stopping like it's an at disco Going to a club Singing music in the top Here's a song You wanna sing along
grew Mr. Cool from $10 million to over $100 million a year. We took Transparent Labs from $2 to $24 million. We took Slingshot from $7 to $12 million. We took Fence DIY from $1 to $5 million. We doubled ClickFunnels' return on ad spend in two months. And we drove $12 million for CreditRepair.com. So click that link and schedule a call. How do we do it at Chamber Media? Well, we took 20 world-class ad buyers and 14 production teams and put them under one roof. Like the Brady Bunch, but bigger and less incestuous. Speak for yourself, I'm married to HR. Ooh. The safest place to gather all your clients. Open a segregated account with Connect Pay to keep yours and customers' money separately. There are over 4 billion users on the internet worldwide who generate trillions of US dollars every year. There are several ways to attract part of this huge traffic to your website. Search engines, organic and paid traffic, push notifications, social media traffic, Foreshop net index, and much more. When users enter the website, they are monetized in several ways. Ads, CPC, CPM, e-commerce, dropshipping and affiliate marketing, mailing list marketing, and much more. So what do you get? You are the owner of the website with no headaches. Foreshop manages everything for you. You get paid passively. So what do we get? We are managing thousands of niche websites. We get paid for selling traffic and ads to businesses. And while doing so, become one of the top 10 largest online ads companies in the world. Join us today. Scaling an agency can be so difficult, right? It can be so stressful. You're hiring people and you're firing people, you're setting KPIs, you're trying to figure out the tech and the systems and process and operations. You're trying to figure out how do I serve 50 clients and then 100 and then, man, it looks completely different when you serve 500 clients. How do you grow from being a really small team to hundreds and hundreds of people working with you? At height, we're reestablishing the way we do this. We're completely disrupting the model on how agencies can scale. How can we, how can we come together under one technology, under one set of systems, under amazing product fulfillment to create a system that's not only where we can scale faster, but we can scale with more stability. Ultimately, guys, if you wanna to come together, if you wanna to create something absolutely incredible, join us today as we scale across the world. Hello and welcome to the European Summit. My name is Ralph Cochran and I'm here to show you how to get the most out of this hybrid event platform. Now I've promised the team that I won't talk too much about the glorious surroundings here in Marbella, the deep blue sea and the fantastic beaches. But if you weren't able to join us here in Spain, don't worry, there are gonna be some more TESS affiliate conferences starting with Prague in September. And you can find out all the information you need on the tessaffiliateconferences.com website. So let's head over to Brella. This is my homepage. Yours will look something a bit like this. And on the top right hand side, there are a list of tasks that Brella wants you to complete. And the reason for that is 
Brella has a really clever artificial intelligence based matchmaking algorithm. So basically it can show you the people at the event that you should meet based on your profile. Now, the first thing you need to make sure of is that you've opted in for matchmaking and you do that by editing your profile if you haven't already. So here you can see on mine various things that I'm interested in. I really like travel by the looks of it, uh, but I also like virtual reality, crypto, blockchain, and a few other things as well. And I've been able to put my LinkedIn profile in there, my email and website for my company. So helping to generate some leads. Uh, underneath the live stream, and it will be live by the time you're watching this, uh, you'll also find upcoming sessions that Brella is going to recommend to you and sponsors that it thinks based on your profile you will be interested in. But the main reason that Brella is so cool is its matchmaking algorithm that matches you with people that you might be able to do business with. So let's take a look at Nick Callisto, and I promise I don't know Nick, um, but it would appear that we share a few things in common, particularly crypto, blockchain, forex. Uh, fashion to a certain extent and CDNs, content delivery networks. So I can suggest a meeting with Nick and I can type him a quick message here. And if I send that meeting request, he will receive it via this little chat icon top right. So the two speech bubbles is what you're looking for. And here you'll see some chats that I've had earlier. So that's where requests for meetings are gonna come in and that's where your requests will be as well. Now, if Nick accepts my request, then I'll be able to chat to him. And then at the appointed time, which was 10 a.m., we'll be able to have a video call. One of the tips that I'll give you is two minutes before your video call, just send a little chat message saying, looking forward to meeting you in two minutes, or are you ready? Just helps to convert more of those chat messages to actual calls. Now on the Brella user interface, everything that you need is on the left-hand side. Probably the main tab that you'll be in is the stream tab. We have three stages at this show, so a lot of content. And if you're interested in having a look at what's going on on the other channels, you'll find the, all three of them from this drop-down box on the stream tab. It's also on the home tab as well, a uh, little smaller box there, but you see stage one, two, three. So if you want to find stage two, that's how you do it. And then as you move around the platform, the live stream follows you. So you can carry on listening to the content and the discussion whilst you're having a look at the sponsors or in this case, the schedule. On the right-hand side,